This is an extremely, obviously, an extremely wicked thing. But it also goes to show you how much Satan likes to still try to steal things from God and from the truth and then pervert them and twist them and turn it into something that's wicked. The Lord sacrificed His only begotten Son for us. He doesn't demand or expect us to sacrifice our only children and make them pass through the fire you know, to please him or to satisfy him. That can't satisfy him. That's not going to satisfy his judgment. Why? Because it's already been satisfied through his own son. And this is turning the whole gospel backwards. And, I mean, that's just one reason why it's so wicked. But you see how, he, how, how the Satan likes to take something that is true about Jesus Christ being sacrificed for us and turn it around on its head to turn it into this... this this weird works and, and just really disturbing practice of sacrificing your own children unto this false god. So it says he defiled it. He basically just broke it up, destroyed it, and, and made it so that they couldn't use that anymore. That's um, one reference here to the, uh, the children of Hinnom, or the, the valley of the children of Hinnom. Now, I had read somewhere, and be careful with what you read online because a lot of it is just completely untrue and not factual at all. When I was preparing for this sermon, I read somewhere that it was a Jewish ritual of child sacrifice, and referring to the, to the Valley of the Children of Hinnom, and just implying that like they're the ones that came up with it. But the reason why I'm even bringing this up, and that's because that's completely false. We see in the book of Joshua the reference to the valley of the children of Hinnom. The children of Hinnom in that valley, obviously there's a man named Hinnom, which we don't really know anything about, but his family, his children, his descendants were the ones that started this, and that, you know, their valley is where this took place and all this wickedness. Now, we have concrete evidence in Scripture that says that the people of the land, the Canaanites, were doing this practice. They were, they were the ones offering their children. Well, I mean, where do you think the children of Israel learned it from? They didn't just come up with it on their own. The god Molech had been around prior to them coming into the land. But because they did not destroy all the inhabitants of the land, like God told them to do, there was a remnant left that was able to defile them and bring in their false religion and be a plague unto them and, and turn their heart away from serving the Lord by even just having them all learn about it. They're all able to, to, to oh, so what do you guys do? Oh, who do you worship? Oh, what do you do? Well, we'll take that. We'll incorporate that into, into our religion. We'll just bring people. Oh, I like that. Let's, let's include that. 